tensions are heightening in Ukraine. Canadian truckers stage an enormous protest against vaccine mandates. And New York's mask mandate is banned, then unbanned. Then more on this week's headlines. Welcome to America Uncovered, I'm Chris Chappell. Ukraine's defense minister sought to keep citizens calm this week, telling them there's no grounds to believe that Russia will invade imminently. This is despite the fact that 100,000 Russian troops have gathered at the Ukrainian border. 8,500 US troops were placed on heightened readiness to deploy and assist Ukraine, and Russia said, don't be optimistic about a diplomatic path forward offered by the US. But no, there's definitely no grounds to believe anything violent will happen. This is like a gazelle seeing a pride of drooling lions approaching them and telling all the other gazelles, relax, maybe they're just lost and want to ask for directions. Quit being so jumpy. The defense minister said, don't worry, sleep well, no need to have your bags packed. This is like when your parents said to not worry, they weren't getting divorced. Even though they each had lawyers, dad spent the weekends away and mom introduced you to her new special friend. Sleep well, kids. Speaking of things on the verge of imploding, the global economy. Total global economic losses since the start of the pandemic have reached $14 trillion. And the economies of the US and China will grow more slowly than predicted. That's despite the US economy growing more quickly than expected in the fourth quarter of 2021. This is due to continued inflation, supply chain problems, and the continued spread of the Omicron COVID variant. All of this has led to a volatile stock market that dropped significantly this week, and then grew. Okay, but my NFTs are still valuable, right? Those would never become worthless, er. Congress is attempting to do something about the stock market, and that's making sure Congress doesn't bet on the stock market. A bipartisan group of representatives in the House is asking Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi to vote on a bill that would ban Congress members from trading stocks, basically to prevent a type of insider trading. I did an entire story covering that. You should check it out. Now, while I think it's great if members of Congress were stopped from insider trading, I'd be nervous if they agreed to do it now. Because that means people with insider knowledge on the stock market agree to stop trading stocks while the market is dipping. Why are you abandoning ship now? What do you know? How bad is it gonna get? I wasted my money on these NFTs, didn't I? Why did I ever let that Uber driver talk me into this? When asked about inflation by a Fox News reporter, President Biden had this to say. Do you think inflation is a political liability? That's a great asset. More inflation. What a stupid son of a bitch. Glad to see the pressure isn't getting to Joe. The sad thing is, that was probably the clearest message I've seen Biden send during his presidency so far. The Fox News reporter said Biden reached out to him within an hour of this insult and apologized. He said, it's nothing personal, pal. And we went back and forth, and we were talking about just kind of moving forward. And I made sure to tell him that I'm always going to try to ask something different than what everybody else is asking. And he said, you got to. Wow. It's nice to see two people resolve their disagreement cordially, like adults, and not like parents that are definitely not getting divorced. More after the break. Welcome back. Robert Kennedy Jr. apologized for remarks he made at an anti-vaxxer rally, where he criticized vaccine mandates by saying, even in Hitler's Germany, you could cross the Alps into Switzerland. You could hide in an attic, like Anne Frank did. Yeah, don't you wish you were as fortunate and free as that pillar of privilege, Anne Frank? Anytime someone visits the Anne Frank Museum, their main takeaway is always, dang, she was so lucky. I wish I had as many liberties as Anne Frank. Personally, I'm very offended by what Kennedy said. Not as a journalist, as a comedian. Comparing COVID mandates to Nazis is totally hack by now. 
Marjorie Taylor Greene has already driven that material into the ground. Comparing COVID mandates to the Nazis is the new what's the deal with airline food joke. And by the way, most airlines offer credit cards now, so if you sign up for them, you get discounts on in-flight meals. That's the deal with airline food. Stop asking about it. It isn't just Americans upset with vaccine mandates. Truck drivers in Canada are protesting vaccine mandates and other authoritarian COVID policies. They're joining what's being called the Freedom Convoy. It's a Guinness World Record shattering 70 kilometer long fleet of trucks driving cross country from Vancouver to the capital in Ottawa. Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau commented on the convoy saying they are a small fringe minority who are on the way to Ottawa who are holding unacceptable views. Yep, just a small record breaking 70 kilometer long minority group. First of all, I don't know why he thinks their views are unacceptable. Look at this. They're obviously social distancing. I think Trudeau is just jealous. As one Canadian on TikTok explains, You know what, I never, I've never seen this much Canadians come together. Like when the trucks roll through a town, do you see so much people there? You know, none of these politicians ever pull that much people out. It's a shame Trudeau considers them a minority group because that means he's gonna dress up like them at his next costume party. How long will this convoy last? Until they drive across all of Canada, or until Robert Kennedy Jr.'s demands are met and they're all as free as Anne Frank. And after the break, Supreme Court Justice Stephen Breyer is retiring. Welcome back. Liberal Supreme Court Justice Stephen Breyer will be retiring giving President Biden his first chance to appoint a Supreme Court justice. Unless, of course, Mitch McConnell says, we can't elect a new judge to the Supreme Court when the next presidential election is only 33 months away. That guy's a real bench blocker. White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki said Biden intends to fulfill a campaign promise in regards to the Supreme Court. The president has stated and reiterated his commitment to nominating a black woman to the Supreme Court and certainly stands by that. Considering Biden's track record of fulfilling his campaign promises, I think this means we can all look forward to future Supreme Court Justice Rachel Dolezal. The US Supreme Court will hear a case that would ban Harvard University and the University of North Carolina from considering race when accepting undergrad students. The appeal was brought forth by Students for Fair Admissions, founded by conservative legal strategist Edward Blum, who is opposed to affirmative action. Proponents of affirmative action say that it helps fight discrimination, while detractors of affirmative action say it encourages discrimination. While everyone without a concrete opinion on affirmative action sees this argument as, you're racist. No, you're the racist. The president of Harvard University said, considering race as one factor among many in admissions decisions produces a more diverse student body which strengthens the learning environment for all. Some say banning affirmative action could hurt minority students hoping to be accepted into a prestigious college. However, Students for Fair Admissions filed this lawsuit on behalf of Asian Americans, who are a minority group they say have been hurt by affirmative action. They allege Asian American acceptance to Harvard has been kept at an artificially low rate despite Asians' high grades and test scores to give more spots to other minorities. So the situation isn't as black and white as it seems. It's complicated and nuanced. But at least there's one thing we can all agree on. No matter someone's race, ethnicity, gender, or sexual orientation, everyone deserves the same opportunity to be financially crippled by student loan debt for the rest of their life. Speaking of court cases, a New York judge blocked the state's mask mandate. They ruled it was enacted illegally since it didn't have the approval of state lawmakers and is therefore void and unenforceable. The Attorney General of New York immediately filed an appeal, and a judge in the state's Supreme Court blocked the ruling by the judge in the lower court. So for now, the mask mandate is back in effect. However, not everyone thinks fighting to keep these mandates is a good idea. The former director of the Food and Drug Administration and current board member at Pfizer, Dr. Steve Gottlieb said that declining COVID cases should encourage legislators to ease mask and vaccine mandates. 
I think certainly on the East Coast, where you see cases declining dramatically, we need to be willing to lean in and do that very soon. I think as conditions improve, we have to be willing to relax some of these measures, with the same speed that we put them in place. The mask mandate was deemed unenforceable by one judge, and a board member at a company that makes COVID vaccines says mandates should be lifted. So of course, the New York Education Department announced they would still enforce the mask mandate even before the mandate was reinstated. While these legal steps occur, it is NYSED's position that schools should continue to follow the mask rule. Those students are probably thinking, if you're going to break a law, can't you at least break a cool one? Like letting us gamble. Then again, if you're going to a New York public school, you're already taking a huge gamble. Actually, schools enforcing a mask mandate aren't breaking the law, even if the mandate were to be struck down. The lower court judge's ruling simply dictated that the state could enforce schools to enact a mask mandate. But schools could still have one if they chose to. And in many places without mandates, schools still require students to wear masks. Some people, in the comment section to this video especially, are likely saying that's because it was never about keeping us safe. It was always about control. Let's go, Brandon! I see you. But I don't think it's about control. Here's my theory. I think these teachers just don't want to see your kids' ugly faces anymore. Okay, class, an N95 mask isn't enough anymore. From now on, please wear these paper bags over your entire head. It's the only way to keep me, uh, I mean you, safe. And in other questionable COVID policy decisions, the Florida Department of Health announced it was shutting down all monoclonal antibody treatment sites after the FDA rescinded emergency use authorization, saying, Data shows these treatments are highly unlikely to be active against the Omicron variant. And since Omicron accounts for the vast majority of COVID infections, the FDA no longer authorizes these monoclonal antibody treatments. Although they said if a new variant comes along and the treatments prove to be effective against it, they might reauthorize it. This is absolutely shocking. I didn't realize Florida was doing anything to treat COVID, other than the usual remedy to treat any illness in Florida spraying NyQuil and 4Loco on patients in the middle of a wet t-shirt contest. Florida's Deputy Secretary for Health said he disagreed with this decision, especially about barring Regeneron treatments. Florida had just ordered several thousand doses of Regeneron, and he said the FDA didn't provide any clinical evidence to back up its decision. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis attacked President Biden over this, saying, without a shred of clinical data to support this action, Biden has forced trained medical professionals to choose between treating their patients or breaking the law. Of course, DeSantis might also be upset because he's been promoting Regeneron's monoclonal antibody treatments for months. Plus, the CEO of a hedge fund that has major shares of Regeneron has donated over $10 million since 2018 to a political committee that supports DeSantis. So the FDA is pushing more for vaccines, while DeSantis is pushing more for a drug treatment a large donor of his has a financial interest in. This seems to be a matter of politics and profit over patients. Whenever someone wonders why no one trusts the government, my reaction is... What a stupid son of a bitch. So what do you think about the stories we covered this week? Let us know in the comments below. And remember, America Uncovered is supported mainly by viewers. Be sure to visit patreon.com slash America Uncovered. Contribute a dollar or more per episode. We rely on your support to help us keep making great episodes. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. Thanks for watching America Uncovered.